Bonjour, merci per votre invitació. I vull parlar en anglès, però és una gran oportunitat to share with you our experience in community quarrimony. In this case, I've been asked to talk on intracellular fastidious uh, bacteria. This is uh, not, not very common. We'll see it. Uh, this is the structure of my lecture, presentation of a case report. Uh, what can be expected? What does not help the patient? What can help the patient, and finally, a couple of uh, take-home messages that can be uh, discussed later. Uh, this is a, a patient that arrived to the emergency department, uh, a young man, uh, on Monday morning, with no past medical history, no age virus risk factors, and five days before, uh, he referred sore throat, plus myalgia, fever, and uh, headache. Uh, it seems that it improved, but the fever restarted on day six with additional chills and, and was visiting the emergency department with tachypnea. Uh, an important antecedent was that he was in Christmas holidays in Vietnam, visiting Hanoi, Sapa, Da Nang, and Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, at this uh, moment, uh, OptiFlow was uh, started, and uh, because we are in, in the epidemic season of influenza, uh, both Oseltamivir and Ceftriaxone uh, was uh, started. This is the Czech ray at the arrival of the emergency department. And the clinical progress uh, was disturbing because uh, uh, the patient was seen a couple of hours after arrival with a pulmonary severity index of one. Uh, both uh, therapies were started, but uh, some hours later, uh, the patient uh, was progressively tachypneic, uh, tachycardic, and increased the score of severity. And uh, at the evening, the patient was uh, with severe tachypnea, uh, with a PSI of uh, four, and uh, had to be intubated. Uh, in spite of this, being in mechanical ventilation, the patient developed uh, shock and required vasopressors, and next morning, uh, the patient uh, required ECMO. So th it was a dramatic presentation of a young patient uh, arriving from a travel without uh, particularly comorbidities or, or factors. Uh, this is a, an interesting cooperation paper that developed uh, between two groups, uh, two study groups of the ESMIT. Uh, one was, uh, what is the initial and microbial? Second uh, issue is, uh, what are other causes, vaccination efficacy, diagnostic workup, and finally, a, a third a group of challenges is uh, whether uh, different techniques of oxygenation uh, need to be required either in immunocompromised or, or, or immunosuppressive. We have only 15 minutes, so I will focus in, in, in the main diagnostic workup and uh, in the uh, uh, oxygenation therapies. The patient uh, was intubated, and there are some issues that can be discussed later uh, if you want. Uh, in, in, in the position paper uh, that uh, was developed in two parts, one was uh, infection control and resistance, and the second part on uh, clinical syndromes, we were discussing what was the management of returning travelers to the ICU. I believe this is an area that, that needs uh, further information uh, because they are increasing travel, uh, and this is a real challenge. Uh, the patient developed subsequently bilateral pulmonary infiltrates and also mild hepatitis, increased amylase and lipase, myocarditis, and uh, microbiological lab reported uh, that blood cultures remained negative, uh, PCR for influenza, and it was a multiplex uh, uh, for respiratory viruses, was negative uh, for everybody. The urinary antigen tests were negative for both Legionella and Streptococcus pneumonia. So the challenge is what is the real problem with this patient? Does this patient has uh, a hantavirus? Does this patient has uh, one of his pathogens that is not identified? It is really a, a nightmare. Uh, So why this patient uh, could not be better? Uh, and why did he get so ill 
so quickly. These are two of the questions that have to be addressed. Uh, there are several reasons that explain uh, this. One is that antibiotics take time to work, and some patients uh, present uh, too late. Uh, second issue is that they are clearly uh, genetic factors that influence severity. They are a cooperative study of the uh, intensive care society uh, that develop, uh, developed, uh, showed it, uh, that different GUAs were associated with different uh, outcomes. This is very important. And finally, an, an important issue uh, that uh, allows modification of therapy or management is that bacterial load cannot be measured routinely at the bedside. This is important. We did it in HIV, we did it in cytomegalovirus, and I believe that in bacterial infection, this is an information that would be helpful. These are data that were reported some years ago, where it was clear that it was a close correlation in pneumococcal pneumonia between bacterial load at the emergency department arrival and subsequent uh, development of shock. Uh, another issue is that identifying people that the deteriorate is very difficult, and I believe that the scores that are available, like PSI score, uh, have many deficiencies because the objective was to identify patients available to be discharged. In young patients with hypoxemia, they are a high risk of uh, uh, mistake, and I believe that hypoxemia is extremely important. Uh, and finally, uh, in the current century, uh, still manage uh, uh, microbiological tests from many years ago. Uh, this is a, a, a recent review that, that we reported uh, regarding uh, further management and, and clearly suggests that fast multiplex real-time PCR have to be incorporated to the management of these patients. In combination with data uh, showing host gene expression, it is possible to optimize any microbial. And probably this is much more important than other issues. I, if they were microbiologists, they, they will be happy with Malditov. Remember that Malditov is not good for uh, identification of Streptococcus pneumonia. So I'm strongly favor the development of fast multiplex real time PCR. Uh, and what can we do better? This is, is what, what it is important uh, at, at the bedside. This is, is the request from, from the relatives. So the first that uh, you should do is to consider, in addition to a standard organisms, the possibility of a studious intracellular bacteria. And second, you have to consider regional variability and different antimicrobial choices. For instance, this patient uh, was coming from Asia, and a recent randomized clinical trial uh, demonstrated in Asia superiority of ceftarolin versus a standard uh, therapy with ceftriaxone in patients with uh, pneumococcal pneumonia. So for me, this is a clear candidate for ceftaroline at this time. If the design of the randomized clinical trial uh, was uh, ceftaroline versus an intervention that was called ceftriaxone, any regulatory agency will approve ceftriaxone uh, with this uh, uh, inverse paradigm. So now, in a period in which we are in an epidemic phase of influenza, in patients coming from some areas, consider some modifications in the uh, standard and microbial choices. Uh, intracellular bacteria are common cause of pneumonia uh, and grow poorly or not at all on a standard culture media. And uh, the key issue for us is that do not respond to beta-lactam antibiotic therapy. And they may cause uh, outbreaks of pneumonia that are famous, and also some extra pulmonary manifestations like myocarditis or, or, or hepatitis uh, can suggest the presence of some of these organisms. What are the fastidious intracellular bacteria? Mainly for us in TCU, Legionella pneumonia and Mycoplasma pneumonia. The others are also common, but typically are not associated with severe presentation. And remember that serotype 1 uh, was identified in 85% of urinary antigen tests. Finally, anticipate that, that the pathogen that suffered this patient was Legionella pneumophila serotype 2. So it was not possible to identify with a standard test. Uh, what we learned uh, uh, with uh, this issue is when uh, urinary antigen test all identifies Legionella pneumophila serotype 1. So PCR has a real role uh, to develop in this patient. We need to ask to our lab uh, to 
prepare for these techniques in respiratory samples in patients in TCU. Second, remember that serology is useful for epidemiological purposes, but not for diagnosis at bedside. From clinical implications are uh, differences in management. Macrolides, azithromycin, remains the best empirical therapy for intracellular respiratory pathogens. Although you know very well, some observational studies have suggested that quinolones may be optimal for severe legionellosis. Moreover, a few studies have suggested that in severe legionellosis, combination of azithromycin plus a fluoroquinolone uh, may have a potential advantage. This is very specific uh, in, in some situations, but in presence of a big outbreak uh, of legionella, like, like recently developed a couple of them in Portugal, this is uh, some issues that have to be taken uh, in uh, management of these patients. And finally, uh, a strong recommendation that the specific molecular diagnostic test, I'm mentioning real-time PCR, should be requested for early recognition of the intracellular bacteria. These are the three specific issues regarding fastidious intracellular bacteria to us. This is a, a nice uh, figure that tries to summarize all the achievements and perspective for the reduction of uh, severe mortality, uh, severe, uh, or severe cap mortality. So in the left, you have the achievements. One is early antibiotic administration, as soon as possible. Second is appropriateness of antibiotic choice. Does not matter to give an antibiotic. It has to be an active antibiotic. And finally, uh, uh, measures of improvement of intensive care. In my view, the incorporation of OptiFlow over the past five or seven years has been very useful in the management of these patients. And my perspective in the future is that we need a precise risk stratification. In spite of many epidemiological studies, it is still lacking information regarding this. And depending on this, we need to develop personalized therapies. What would be very helpful is the application of fast diagnostic molecular techniques that should not be uh, reserved for blood, should not be reserved for immunocompromised patients, and have to be incorporated very quickly at the bedside uh, in the management uh, of uh, patients with committed pneumonia uh, in uh, the emergency department or the ICU. And finally, uh, someone can ask, uh, and, and what is the limit? So uh, this is a typical question from the fellows. So my, my answer is always the limit uh, is in the horizon. And I, I would like uh, to focus particularly in two practical take-home measures. One, that it is a great time to be doing molecular diagnostic tests in severe CAP. And be careful with the interpretation. Uh, the, the, the question that the chair did regarding the positivity of the test over several days or weeks is true. Uh, so, so it has to be interpreted uh, uh, with uh, uh, careful. And second, consider to add uh, therapy with macrolides, zithromycin in my view, or uh, in a few patients with quinolones in severe cap episodes, uh, both, but the immunomodulatory uh, power of uh, macrolides in these patients that has demonstrated in patients with vasopressors to reduce between 13 and 15 mortality at 28 days, and particularly uh, to cover fastidious intracellular organisms that should not be uh, dilated. So, this is the take-home messages from my presentation, and this is a real case report that uh, uh, is stimulating for this discussion. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.